ever since a recent episode of the podcast where I found out about SXMO, which is basically a collection of the suckless utilities running on a phone, I've been getting interested in buying a Pine phone, not because I think this would be a great daily driver, I just think this would be fun to mess around with. And just as I was getting interested in this, the Pine Phone Pro was announced. Now let's dive into it and work out whether I'm actually going to buy one. Now if you're an original Pine Phone owner, there is a lot of stuff about this that really isn't going to change. So the Pine Phone has these hardware switches where you can disable things like the camera, microphone, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth combo, the headphone and the LTE modem, and all of those switches are still going to be there. From what I understand, they're going to be in the exact same place under the back cover like they were before. From a privacy aspect, I do certainly think that idea is cool. It's not something I would ever really care to mess around with, with the exception of doing it for like the sake of a video. I kind of want most of my phone to be working. If I didn't want to, you know, have a microphone on me, I just wouldn't carry the phone with me. But I totally get why some people want to do that. And while a lot of the parts internally are going to be changing, it's going to retain the same level of openness that existed with the original Pine Phone. So on that original device, the only parts that weren't FOSS were the firmware for the Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo chip and also for the LTE modem. Now, there are FOSS options that do exist to replace that hardware, but there are problems with doing that. So... While those options do exist, they're not exactly available at scale, and in the case of using in a phone where battery life and heat is incredibly important, they weren't going to, you know, work properly in the device that Pine64 wanted to build. Also, the new Pine phone is going to be 2mm thicker, so this means that the original cases you had will no longer fit it, Technically, you can force them to fit, but they won't be designed to fit. However, all of the other accessories made for the Pine Phone will still work for the Pine Phone Pro. Before we get into the specs and what they actually mean, Pine64 isn't trying to pretend that this device is something that it really isn't. They're not trying to pretend like mobile Linux is actually at the point where just a regular person who has never used Linux and has never done all of these sort of hacky stuff can actually go and use. They're not trying to pretend like it's at the state of modern Android and modern iOS. They are very upfront about the fact that this pre-order right now is made for developers. I'll get into that pre-order in just a bit. And also, they have a bit here where they explain who this device really is made for. It's not made for the regular phone user who needs all of these proprietary Android applications like their banking, mobile games, travel applications. What it's made for is someone like me. Someone who runs Gen 2, Arch Linux, BSD, who likes to mess around with their system and when something breaks... A lot of the time that's just a good thing because it means that's an experience where you can go and learn something more about your system. The Pine Phone Pro is going to be powerful enough for those people to use as a daily driver if they really want to. Because this is going to be powerful enough that if you have it docked, it's going to be good enough to run a 1080p screen. You can use Office Suite, you can do some very light image editing but you have to be able to accept the faults that exist with such a beta level, not operating system, more like a beta level user experience. So I mentioned you can do light computing perfectly fine with the Pine Phone Pro. Now this is assuming that it doesn't have some horrible throttling issue. This is just going by the spec sheet on how the SoC should be performing. So the original Pine Phone it's not exact, but roughly performed at the level of a Raspberry Pi 3. So for this new Pine Phone Pro, this is going to have a rock chip RK3399S, which is going to be a slightly modified version of this guy right here. Now, I can't say exactly what modifications were made without having the device directly in front of me, but over on this website, they do mention the changes that, at least some of the changes that were made. So what they did is they worked with the Rockchip team to enable the Pine Phone Pro suspend state, which allows the smartphone to receive calls and SMS messages while preserving batteries. So it doesn't sound like they 
did any, you know, crazy performance tuning. So I think it's fairly fair to assume that the performance of this chip is going to be roughly the performance of the PinePhone Pro. Now, what this means is I was able to find some benchmarks that sort of indicated what it's actually going to perform like. And it's not going to be some amazing performer. What it's going to do is perform roughly in the range of an LG K40 from 2019, a Samsung Galaxy J7 from 2018, and a Samsung Galaxy Tab S2 from 2015. So this is roughly 10 or so percent better than a Raspberry Pi 4. Keep in mind these benchmarks were very, very small sample sizes and because I didn't control the benchmark, these were just benchmarks I found online, it's hard to say whether they're actually good benchmarks or if they're just absolute nonsense, but this seems to be lining up with what other people are saying about where it might perform. I've heard some people saying it's going to perform around a Snapdragon 660, which is pretty much the same range that I'm saying. So in short, basically a mid-range $200-ish smartphone from 2018-2019. That might sound horrible for someone who runs like an absolute bleeding edge smartphone, but the phone that I have, this is roughly from the same era. And honestly, it, it does everything that I could ever want it to. This is really as fast as a phone needs to be, phones have sort of been as fast as they need to be for a good, like, five or so years. Really, the only thing stopping you buying a smartphone from five years ago is that nobody ever updates them. Now, with that fairly good performance, it's going to be combining that with a 6-inch 1440 by 720p screen. So that means no 1080p. Now, this chip could very easily drive that, but it doesn't need to. So I've seen some people complaining about this, saying, oh, how dare it not have 1080p in 2021? But need I remind you, the Steam Deck has an 800p screen that is at 7 inches. You don't need 1080p at a screen that size. It's barely noticeable. 4K is an absolute meme, but even 1080p is a little bit overkill. Unless you're like looking at the phone like this, it really doesn't matter. Plus being 720p, it saves some performance for actually doing the things on your phone that you want to do on your phone rather than just wasting them driving a high resolution screen just for the sake of having it. Now, being a relatively low volume device in the middle of a chip shortage, I can totally understand why the price might be a pain point for you, like I saw it was a pain point for a lot of people when talking about the Fairphone, which I believe was at like $700 or something crazy like that. So the Pinephone Pro is going to be $400 USD. And because this is the developer pre-order, this is subject to change. It probably will come down at some point, but just keep in mind that this may not be the final price. So in Australia, that would put it around... 500 or so dollars without considering things like import taxes and shipping fees and all that sort of stuff. So around $500 before that, probably closer to like $550, $600 after that. The base Pine phone is $150 or $200 if you get the convergence package, which is going to make that remain the more popular device. This is the way that Pine64 is sort of looking at it. The Pine Phone Pro is here for people who want to have a more powerful device and actually be able to daily drive mainline Linux if they really want to. But for the developers and everyone who wants to try out the Pine Phone, the original model is probably going to remain way more popular just because it is a much lower price tag to actually swallow. Now, speaking of those pre-orders, while anybody can try to pre-order it, when you get to the pre-order form, you'll see that it is very, very heavily focused around developers. I have a feeling that they don't have that many devices to actually ship out, so they're probably going to be vetting people to make sure that people who actually get this device actually have experience developing on Linux phones. So they'll ask you your name, your email, a short summary of your experience with Linux smartphones, what devices you've worked on, are you contributing to any open source projects, link to existing work, 
obviously when it goes open for more public sale this isn't going to be here but for this original I guess we can call it a dev kit because that's sort of the way they're handling it it is going to have this form attached to it now like the original device it's going to be shipping with Manjaro KDE Plasma Mobile but unlike the original device when that first launched there is a lot more options that exist back then there were some options but in the years since the original device a lot more things have popped up and a lot more things have sort of gotten a lot more mature where you can actually you know reasonably use them SXMO for example I wouldn't want to give to most people but from what I can see it's perfectly usable if you like the you know DWM style of interaction now I briefly touched on this earlier but the Pine Phone Pro isn't a Pine Phone 2. What I mean by this is the Pine Phone Pro isn't going to be replacing the original Pine Phone and the original device will still be for sale along with parts to actually fix that device. I didn't mention this earlier but Pine64 is still going to be committed to selling replacement parts for the Pine Phone Pro so you can go and you know fix it yourself whatever else you want to do with it. Now the big question is, am I going to buy a Pine Phone Pro considering I'm thinking of buying a Pine Phone anyway? Well, if Pine64 wants to send me one, I would very much appreciate that email linked on my channel. I'll make a video, I'll make as many videos as you want. But in all seriousness though, I'm probably not going to buy a Pine Phone Pro because the original Pine Phone, while it is a way, way less powerful device, is going to do everything that I want it to do to be able to like make content on it and mess around with it. So SXML is one of the things I want to talk about. I want to talk about doing Android emulation with Anbox. I know I can do that on like my desktop, but I want to sort of see how well it performs actually running on a Pine phone and other little things like that. So the original Pine phone is going to do what I want it to do. But if you're already a Pine phone user and you want to sort of daily drive it, but the original Pine phone just isn't going to be as powerful as you want it to be, maybe buying a Pine Phone Pro is actually going to be worth it for you because you already know what sort of experience you're going to get with it. So that's going to be it for me. Let me know your thoughts on the Pine Phone Pro in the comment section down below. Are you going to buy one? Is the original Pine Phone enough for you? Or do you just not really care about mainline Android on a mobile device and you're going to stick with your Android or iOS device? I want to find out. Let me know. So that's going to be it for me. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Ops and Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.